There's only two weeks left in the January transfer window and it's all a little bit quiet at the moment as far as new signings are going for Manchester United. But if Ole Gunnar Solskjaer got his dream signings in January or maybe in the summer, who would they be? What would his Manchester United starting eleven look like with those new signings in? I'm going to run through what I think Solskjaer's dream Manchester United team would be with those new signings. And as always, I want to hear yours, so get yours in the comments below. Now, before we get into the video, as always, if you are new to United People's TV, just subscribe down there and join the United community. But without further ado, let's take a look at what I think Solskjaer's dream team would be. And of course, we start in goal with David De Gea, who had, oh, well, not arguably, his best performance of the season so far against Spurs in that 1-0 win. Marcus Rashford and that goal in the first half were responsible for Manchester United's victory, but so was David De Gea with 11 saves. Absolutely sensational. For me, he's still the best goalkeeper in the world, and United cannot afford to let him go. He stayed through Moyes, he stayed through Van Gaal and Mourinho, and now he's here with his fifth manager. I hope he stays at United for his entire career. He is the world's best, and we need him in goal in this team. Now, I'm looking at right back, and I'm putting Diogo Dalot in my team. Now, some of you may go, look, sod Dalot. Let's get an established right back in. Just like Guardiola when he signed his new wing back, spent loads and loads of money, changed it with Walker and Danilo and Mendy. Let's do the same thing. But for me, I see real potential in the lot and I see bigger problems in this squad than signing a new right back. I think the lot has shown me he's got the potential to be a great crosser. I've seen that, I've seen that ability in him. I've seen him defensively be quite weak, but that's because he's getting used to the Premier League. Just like Victor Lindelof in his first year, it's a different ball game over here. I suppose we can't really know that as fans because we're not footballers, but it's clear to see. And for me, Delot has enough potential and he's a teenager and Solskjaer loves his youth players. I could see Delot coming through next year and being a brilliant player for Manchester United. And I would absolutely keep him at right back. On the left, I wouldn't sign a new left back either. I would keep Luke Shaw. I would replace Antonio Valencia and I would question whether Ashley Young should be staying in the squad, but he'll probably be there for one more year. I would keep Luke Shaw there. Luke Shaw, for me, has all the potential still to be England's best left back. That hasn't changed. You know, the injury was horrible and it took him years to get back to where he is now, but he's here now. And the un I wouldn't say it's untapped potential. We've seen it. We saw it under Mourinho as well. You know, he's finding his form again. And I think he has the ability to create a partnership with Martial that can be as good as his partnership with Memphis down the left prior to his injury. And if we do sign a new defensive midfielder, which I hope we do, then I feel he'll get much more protection from that defensive midfielder who covered Luke Shaw when he goes forward and he'll be more capable of adding to the attacks. Because I think the modern day fullback's actually the hardest position in football. Because you have to contribute to the attack because you're more naturally the width because teams tend to cut inside now. And therefore you've got to run the whole way back as well. Now, I think Luke Shaw can do that for Manchester United. I think Shaw and Delot, I'd be happy with those as our fullbacks next year. Moving on to centre-backs, which has been a problem for United for some time. And I think Victor Lindelof has shown more than enough under Solskjaer to keep his spot in this team going forward. No matter who we sign as another centre-back, I think Lindelof has shown he's got the ability to be fantastic for Manchester United. I think he has been. His form under Solskjaer has been brilliant. And his form under Mourinho towards the end was also brilliant. Now, Lindelof is a real ball-playing centre-back. When he's confident, he'll run out of defence with the ball. He'll bridge that gap between defence and midfield that we have struggled with for so long when Smalling and Jones are incapable of doing so and instead just shift it right or left to Young or Valencia and we get stuck in our midfield before we knock it long to Lukaku. The ghost of Mourinho past, I suppose, if you want to call it. But Lindelof has the ability, I think, to be a world-class centre-back. I've seen so much progress from last year. It's just that he needs a leader alongside him. And for me, that leader is Kalidou Koulibaly. Now, if we signed him, he'd be, by some margin, the most expensive centre-back we've ever signed. But I think now is the time where United draw a line in the sand and we spend big on that centre-back. We've tried Daily Blind. We've tried Marcus Rojo. We've tried Paddy McNair. Tyler Blackett. We've given Chris Smalling and Phil Jones all the time in the world to establish themselves as adequate replacements for Rio Ferdinand 
Andamani Vidic. We're still undecided on Eric Bailly, who's got great potential, but has a massive rash side to his game. And it just hasn't worked. Fuck it. Spend big on Koulibaly. I keep saying it because it makes perfect sense, but Van Dijk at Liverpool, look at it. Look at how much it changed that team, getting an established world-class centre-back and dropping it into a defence, which up until that point looked shaky. Have Koulibaly and we'll get better performances from Luke Shaw, better performances from Victor Lindelof, better performances from Diogo Dalot, and David De Gea won't have to make 13 saves a game. For me, Koulibaly can be the glue that sticks this defence together. I think the potential of Lindelof, Shaw and Dalot is good enough for all three of them to stay in that defence. We just need Koulibaly to come in there and seal it all together. And I think he will be a sensational signing. And then we move on to defensive midfield. This is where Nemanja Matic has been operating for a couple of years. But I think if Solskjaer is really serious about this fluid style of football that he's got Manchester United playing at the moment, I think replacing Nemanja Matic and upgrading him is an absolute must. And that's why I'm looking at Frankie de Jong from Ajax. A 21-year-old is taking the world by storm at the moment. And he's already ready to play for the European elite. And he's not your average type of defensive midfielder. He's not just a person who's going to win possession and pass it to somebody else to make them pass it forward. De Jong is capable of doing that himself. More than comfortable with the ball at his feet and bringing it and bridging that gap between defence and midfield. Again, talking about that, how Lindelof can do that if he has Koulibaly behind him. Imagine what those two could do if they had De Jong in front of them as well. United would have a ball-playing spine that could go the whole way through. And De Jong is comfortable in possession, capable of passing it short or passing it long, and does have the ability to break those lines. So when you've got Pogba and Herrera maybe in front of him in central midfield, he'll be able to find them. He'll be able to find Martial on the left or Sanchez or whoever's playing there. De Jong is more of an all-round midfielder rather than just a strict, more traditional defensive midfielder. And I think the way that this Solskjaer team is shaping up, we need a midfielder like him in it. And De Jong could be a sensational signing, just like Koulibaly could be. Now, PSG are reportedly leading the race to sign De Jong. And that goes to show the level of quality he already has that PSG are looking at him. And I would love to see him come to Manchester United. As, as good as Nemanja Matic has been at points for Manchester United, I think he suits a different style of football than what we're creating at the moment. And I think De Jong could be a big, big addition. Playing just in front of De Jong would obviously be Paul Pogba, who next season, or already, the crown in the jewel of this team, the centrepiece of this midfield and the centrepiece of this Manchester United team going forward. He's been nothing short of sensational under Solskjaer. And that's because, you know, Solskjaer's let him loose. Let Pogba do what Pogba does best, and he does it brilliantly. And having someone like De Jong behind him could bring even more out of Pogba because he'd receive the ball in better positions. He wouldn't have to drop so deep to start the attacks because he'd have somebody behind him who would be confident enough that he'd receive the ball higher up the pitch. And that is where Paul Pogba is dangerous. And alongside him, I think Ander Herrera should keep his place in his team next year. Now, some of you may disagree and you say, look, Herrera, you know, he's got great attitude. He does this, he does that. But there are better right central midfielders out there that we could bring in with better qualities. And I agree on that. I think there are better right central midfielders than Herrera that we could go and buy. But Herrera's attitude, especially at a time where I questioned so many attitudes of these United players, he stood up, he's been accounted for, and he's been brilliant under Solskjaer. And if you imagine, you know, sometimes you're gonna play tougher games, Herrera could drop deep alongside De Jong and offer some more protection in midfield. He's more of a, he's not a box-to-box -box midfielder, is he? He's not really a defensive midfielder and he's not really an attacking midfielder. He's just capable of playing all these positions, maybe not brilliantly in every single one of them, but more than capable in all of them. And I think Spurs probably was his best performance of the season as well, and that was up against a tough midfield. Herrera is good enough to play for this Manchester United team, and I want to see him keep his spot there. And I think that midfield three of Pogba, De Jong and Herrera, that is capable of challenging for Premier League titles. Moving on to the front three, I certainly wouldn't change Anthony Martial. He is an absolutely key component of this style of football that Solskjaer is bringing to the fore counter-attacking with pace. Martial is electric. There is no better player in this United squad running with the ball at his feet than Martial. He's so, so dangerous when he's got a defender backing off. 
And yes, we haven't seen him shine under Solskjaer like Rashford has, but he was excellent under Mourinho. And we know that Martial's got that in him. It's just a, it comes in waves, does come in purple patches, a little bit like Wayne Rooney used to be. But once he hits those purple patches, he's one of the best in the world. Very young still, so much more potential to get out of him. I want to see him stay at United for a good few years, and I think he really could become one of the one of the best wingers we've seen in the modern era at Manchester United. And I'd love to see him stay in this squad. And I think he should absolutely be in here, just like Marcus Rashford should be. Now, Solskjaer has really put belief back into Rashford. That finish against Spurs, Kane missed the exact same one later in the game. Rashford previously didn't do that. Big chances, big chances, sometimes he missed them. He didn't miss that one. And it was the 1-0 win, the goal that mattered. Rashford has found some new confidence under Solskjaer that is making me think he really can be United's number nine for some years. And he's keeping £70 million Romelu Lukaku on the bench. Absolutely right decision by Solskjaer there because Rashford's just like Martial, a key component of this counter-attacking style of football that we've got. Bags of pace, capable with the ball at his feet, great interplay, great link-up play. Him and Martial bounce off each other. It's just perfect on paper. But something I do think it needs, though, is probably a new right winger. Jesse Lingard, I've always been an advocate of Jesse Lingard. He is a very good squad player. But I think what Jesse Lingard lacks in directness, we need to make up for in a natural right winger. And that is why I'm looking at Leon Bailey. Now, the 21-year-old by Leverkusen player stormed it in the Bundesliga last season. This year, he's getting outshone by Jadon Sancho, who could be another shout for that position if you would prefer to see him. But he's got bags of potential. And the reason I like Bailey is because he's so direct. Left-footed, but likes to play out on the right-hand side, he cuts inside and shoots. Whereas if we had Lingard or Mata playing out on the right-hand side, they cut inside and pass. And we need directness from our wingers because you're going to get the width from our fullbacks who are hopefully next season going to be Delot and Shaw. So we need directness from our wingers. And I think Bailey can do that in abundance. Can play on the left as well. So you know if Martial's out injured or if you just want to switch sides, Bailey's capable of that. But let me know what right winger you would like to see. But for me, that front three, whew, frightening, frightening for defences. It really, really would be. And that's not even counting in the fact that we still have Alexis Sanchez if he's, be, if he's here next year. We've still got Juan Mata when we want to slow it down a bit. And we've still got Jesse Lingard. That is an attack capable of challenging for the Premier League. And with a new centre-back in Koulibaly, a new defensive midfielder in De Jong, and a new right winger in Bailey, Solskjaer, for me, would plug the holes in this United squad. Plug the areas where I feel United are weakest and create a team I think would genuinely be capable of challenging City and Liverpool next year. A strong defence with Koulibaly at the heart of it, a strong midfield with De Jong at the pivot behind Pogba and Herrera, and a front three of Bailey, Rashford and Martial. Every defence would be scared of playing against them. Every midfield would be scared about playing against those three as well. And that defence has the ability to give De Gea days off again. You know, a couple of years ago, De Gea didn't really have to make too many saves. Now he's having to make so many saves every single game because our defence leaks opportunities. I don't think that defence would. And for me, that would be, that would be a dream starting 11 for Manchester United next season. Or in January, if United want to spend a hell of a lot of money in January, maybe that won't happen. But who would your dream team under Solskjaer or maybe Pochettino or whoever comes in, who would that dream team be? Let me know your formations and your starting 11s in the comments below. Fingers crossed United do make a defensive signing in January. I really want Koulibaly. Maybe if we can't get Koulibaly, maybe it's better to wait until the summer. But as always, comment below. If you're new to United People's TV, make sure you subscribe. And until next time, take it easy.